Matt 92, chapter 1. In the beginning, we are talking about how to take a number and raise it to a power. So let's say you have two to power of three. The number at the top is exponent and this two is the base. So three is exponent or you also call it, you call it power. So that means that you have to take the two and multiply it by itself three times. But if I have three to power of two, it means you have to take the three and multiply by itself two times. Now, what if you have a negative number? Let's say I have negative one to power of three. Negative one to power of three means you take a negative one and multiply by itself three times. So negative one times negative one is one and one times negative one is negative. So if you take a number and raise it to an odd number, a if the power is odd, the outcome is negative, okay? Or let's say you have negative two and the whole thing to the power of three, it would be negative two times negative two times negative two, so the outcome is negative eight, which is your calculator. Negative two times negative two is four. Four times negative two is negative eight. But what if the <clears throat> power is even number, like two? In that case, negative four times negative four the outcome is positive. Negative four times negative four is 60, okay? Now, you need to remember that there is a difference between negative three, the whole parentheses around it to power of two, and negative three with no parentheses around it to power of two. There is a main difference between these two. The first one, since there is a parentheses around negative three, it means you have to take negative three and multiply by itself. So that would be positive nine. But this one, negative is not with the three. So you do this part first. 3 to power of 2, which is 9. So the outcome is negative 9. So you see the difference, positive 9 and negative 9? So if there is a parenthesis around the negative number, that means you have to take that parenthesis and multiply by itself. But if there is no parenthesis, this negative has nothing to do with this part. Okay? So like here, you have negative 1 to power of 8. So negative one to power of eight, that means you multiply negative one eight times. And since the outcome, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, since the outcome is positive, why is positive? Because the power is even number, eight. So it would be just positive one. And if you have a positive, you don't have to, Note that here. So if you just write one, means it's a positive one. Or if you want, you could just write as positive one. Make no difference. So in that case, if I have one fifth to the power of four, one fifth to the power of four is one fifth times one fifth times one fifth times one fifth. So you multiply all these numerators, which is one. 
And at the bottom, you have five times five times five times five, which is five to the power of four. And what is one over, what is five to the power of four? Five to the power of four, you use the power in your calculator. Like it just depends what type of calculator you're using, but some calculator have this function of y to the x. So would be five and then that functions and then four. So you need to understand what type of calculator you're using and what is the power. So five to the power of four is 625. So then if you know, if you understand how to use the power, you should be able to do it for this. 1.34 to power of three. So that you need to use the calculator for that. This is the one I was telling you, minus four to power of three. There is no parentheses around it, right? So that would be minus four times, minus four times minus four, which is minus 64. I put a parenthesis, but you don't really need a parenthesis. I just put a parenthesis to understand that means that you have to raise it to power of three. If, if the power is odd, it doesn't matter whether you have parentheses around it or not. So like if I have minus four, the parentheses are under to power of three or minus four to power of three, either case you have minus 64. Make no difference whether you have a parenthesis around or not. It just be the even number is different. Like if I have minus four to power of two, this is sixteen positive sixteen. But if I have minus four to power of two, that means minus sixteen. See, so it make a difference if your power is even. If power is odd, it doesn't matter whether you have parentheses around it or not. The next is convert value in scientific notation. I put a little bit of notes here from the textbook that, you know, if you have a large number like this, calculator normally, instead of 10 to power of 11, it writes something like E11. E11 means you have 11 digit after the number. So for instance here, you want to calculate eight to power of three. So it's eight to power of 13. This is very large number. See, calculator write something like this, 5.497, blah, 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 E11 means times 10 to power of 11 because he doesn't have room to display the entire numbers here. So in that case, you, if you use a calculator, you could just put 5.39 times 10 to power of five means you have five zero here, like here, I have 5.39, right? Times 10 to power of five means one, one, two, three, four, five. 10 to power of five means this, 100,000. When you multiply, it gave you that number. This is the way to write it as a standard. Now, this is written in scientific notation. Scientific notation means that you have, before the decimal, you have only one number. And instead of 10 to power of five, you write E5. E5 means 10 to power of five. That's what scientific notation means. Here, the number is written in scientific notation. We ask you to write it as standard notation. These problems, I had a solution for you. So they're saying that 
Josh Allred's rate is $18.75 per hour. He works 15 hours. How much is that? It's just the multiplications. You just multiply this to see how much is it making. So dollar per hour times number of hours. So in that case, dollar per hour multiplied by hour would be dollar. That's what we have here. Here I explain about this um, scientific note. Let's say you have two large numbers like that, right? <clears throat> if you put these two numbers on the calculator and multiply, see how big these two numbers is? Let's say you type that on your calculator and multiply by another one, which is a very large number. Calculator doesn't have room to put all the numbers. So we'd write it as 1.8034 times E13. That means if you want to find the actual number, you need to move this decimal 11 digit to the right. You see the actual number, see? This is the actual number, right? Calculator doesn't have room to show all this. It shows something like this or something like that. This is scientific notation. Normally, one number before the decimal and then you have the E. So scientific notation is, <clears throat> you have a number here, which is A, and then 10 to power of N, which is just E. Okay, so multiply two large numbers. This is another example. Multiply two large number, which is normally that, but the calculator shows this. When you multiply these two, this is the standard one, but this is scientific notation. Number eight, problem number eight, I'll show you the solution here. The, the rate is 0 0.705, um, it said she sold $2,825, okay? The equation is this, the equation is 0.0725 S. This is the equation, which is 0.0725 S. This equation is given. It means whatever S is, you multiply that by 0 0.0725. What is the value of S given in the problems? Kesha sells 2,825. So instead of this S, you put this number. And that's where you get that. Number two is talking about the percent. So before I go over that, first I want to explain a little bit about the percentage, okay? Before I work on number nine. Percentage is this. Let's say the question is, what is 50% of 40? Example that you most of you know, 50% of 40 is 20. How do I come up with that 20? Percent means you have to take the number and divide by 100. But when you say 50%, it means take the 50 and multiply by 100 is 0.5. Then take this 0.5 and multiply by 40, which is 20. What is 75%? Again, this percent means take 75, divide by 100, and then take these numbers and multiply by 38. That's what the percent means, okay? So in these problems, they, they give you the equation. Are saying the total amount of spending in advertising is 540 L. L is number of houses. How many houses was in the problem? 16. So that's where you come up with that number. So that was for these problems. Now evaluate the expressions <clears throat> again for those. I have the solution for you. How will you do the distributions? What they ask you is this. This expression is given. They ask you to take the negative three and substitute for the T. Remember here you have T to power of two. Anytime you want to substitute a letter with a number, always bring it with a parenthesis, always. 
So when I want to substitute negative three here for T, I bring it with the parentheses. You see that? Why? Because when I have it in the parentheses, but look here, you get to do this first. What is parentheses minus three to power of two? Minus three parentheses around the two power of two is what? It's negative three times negative three, which is positive nine. And then what is negative four times negative three? If I use my calculator, it's positive 12. So I have three times nine, 27, 12, 25, which is 54. The same thing here. You want to substitute six for S, right? And zero for T. Now here, <clears throat> when you multiply zero by any number, the outcome is zero. How do I know? Okay, take negative 11, multiply that by six. It give you minus six is it. Multiply by zero, the whole thing is zero. Take negative two and times zero, the whole thing is zero, it's gone. So all is left is three times X or three times six is 18. Any number multiplied by zero is always zero. So what they want you to take this T and H and substitute here for T and H. <clears throat> and the solution for that is here. I think it's kind of clear. T is half, H is two fifth. Now, when you're adding two fraction with a different denominator, adding two fraction with a different denominator. When you're adding two fraction, let's think of something like that. You have three over five plus one over five. When you're adding two fraction with the same denominator, then you write one denominator and you add the denominator. So that would be four over five. What if you add two numbers with a different denominator like this, like the one that you have in the book? <clears throat> so in that case, two times five is 10. Our goal is to make each denominator 10, change everything to 10. So one over two, I multiply that by five over five. So what do you have? Five over 10. See five over 10, if you use your calculator is 0.5, half is 0.5. So half and five over 10 are the same thing. It's just the appearance is different, okay? So how about this one? Two over five, you want this five to be 10. So you multiply this by two over two. So then what do you have? Four over 10. Now you have two fraction with the same denominator. You write one denominator and you add numerator. So it's nine over 10. <clears throat> See, because if you take, let's say you have something like this, you have three over 10. You know, three over 10 is 0.3, right? If you take a fractions and you multiply numerator and denominator by the same number, nothing changed. Look, multiply by four over four, which is one, right? It's like you're multiplying by one. So what you have is when you multiply two fractions, you multiply no numerators and you multiply the denominator. See, three over 10, now it's 12 over 14, 40. But you know what? If you take 12 and divide by 40, you still get a 0.3. So the value doesn't change. So you're always allowed to take a fractions, numerator and denominator, and multiply by the same number. Nothing changed. But it helps me to change one over two to five over 10, 2 over 5 to 4 over 10. Now I have two fractions with the same denominator. I can write one denominator and add the numerator. This one the same. You take the A and B and you substitute the value. Remember, anytime you bring a negative number, always bring it in the parentheses. Be very careful. Always bring it with the parentheses. 
So you do that and you come up with the five over three. Next is conversion. How do I convert miles per hour? It given in the problems, in the problems is telling you that, hey, 500, 5,280 feet and one hour is how many seconds? One hour is 3,600 seconds. They want us to take miles per hour and change it to feet per second, okay? Mile per hours. All one hour is how many seconds? One hour is how many seconds? 3,600. How many miles? One mile, see here, one mile is 5,280 feet. But how many miles do we have? 120 miles. How much? Would be, you just multiply these two. So the outcome is feet per second. So you take 120, multiply by that 5,280 divided by 360, okay? They want us to convert number 15. They want us to convert 387 centimeter to meters. It's given in the problem that one meter is 100 centimeter. One meter is 100. How many centimeters do you have? 387, how much? Normally, this is a direct proportion. To solve this, what you do is you put a fraction bar here and fraction bar there. And then x over one, which is just an x, you divide these two. That would be 3.87 centimeters. Another one here 87 square feet. We want to change it to a square yard. What is given? Nine square feet is equal to one square yard. Okay, look, nine square feet is equal to one square yard. So you write this. This is given in the problems. Nine square feet is equal to one square yard. How many square feet is given in the problems? Given 87 square feet, they want us to change it to square yard. Okay, so you write that number here. When you want to find the direct proportion, make sure they all, not all the numbers are in the proper units. One yard square is nine square feet. How many square feet do you have? 87. Put the 87 here, not there, is where the square feet is. What is unknown? Square yard. So in that case, what you do when you write it like that, you put the bar here and bar here. Okay. So x, x over one or x is what? 87 divided by nine. Both are divisible by three. Three goes to nine and three goes to 87 is 29 over three. The second one they are saying, convert 10 quarts to gallons and four quarts is one gallon. Again, I write it here, quarts and gallon. Four quarts is one gallon is given. How many quarts do we have? 10, 10, how much? See again, make sure all the numbers are under the proper unit. 10 over four, I'll put a bar here and a bar here. X is 10 divided by four or 2.5. The other one they are saying is 2,540 milliliter to milliliter is 1,000 milliliter is in equal to one liter. This is given. One thousand, one thousand milliliters is equal to one liter. In the problem, we have two thousand five hundred forty milliliter. How many liter is that? Again, you put a bar here and bar there. 
that would give you the call. You could always pause a video if you want to copy the note stuff. But I put a copy of this on the canvas for you to look. These problems, I draw the picture for you. Okay. John wants to paint this room. The area, the, the ceiling and the floor is 16 by 11. 16 by 11 is the ceiling and the floor, but the height of the wall is 11. He, there are four walls here. Each wall is a rectangle. This rectangle is 11 by 16. So this is just for the floor and the ceiling. But The walls are 11 by 16. How do I find the area of the rectangle? Area of rectangle is length multiplied by width. So the area is 11 times 16. Or 176. Okay. Again, each wall is 11 by 16. Height is 11 and the length is 16. Area of the rectangle, this is the rectangle. Area of rectangle is length multiplied by width, which is 176. How many walls do we have? Four. Well, four wall times that is that many square foot. That's the square footage of all the walls. Now, the second part, they say, how many gallons of paint do we need? Each gallon of the paint, it's 176 square feet. Each, each gallon of paint can cover, cover 176 square feet. So if you buy a gallon of paint, in this case, it just covered 176 square feet. How many square feet do we have? 704. Divide that by that. So we need four gallons. How much is each gallon? $17.98. So see how much you need to pay. You multiply that by four. So that would be For this problem number 20, I put the solution in day one. A round trip is 100. If you just go one way, which is uh, 20, let's say you go from here and you come back again. So you just subtract that. So round trip is 100 and time to run is 30. So you subtract. So I have the solution is right here. So it took him 200 minutes for the round trip. If he just spend like 30 minutes to school, how much time is left? You subtract. Write the expression in conventional, conventional, what does conventional form means? You have to put all the letters in order, alphabetic order. In alphabetic order, X always come before Y. So if you ask to write this in conventional form, conventional form means you write it in alphabetic alphabetical order. So since X always is before Y, you just put X first, the Y, and then constant is always at the end, which is two, number is at two. Like this one, 
There is no X, this is all, all. But when you have just one letter like this, the one that has the highest power, put that first and then put the one, one lower than that. And then so it keeps decreasing, the power is decreasing. So this one, you have to write it in order. Y3, Y2, Y1. And then number always stay at the end. Okay? Conventional four. If there are different letters, always put letters in alphabetic order. In this case, among the same letter, it has to put the one with the highest power first and the one with the lowest right after. Same thing here, you have X is first, X4, X2, and then X, and then Y at the end. See, alphabetic order is considered because you have X and then Y. And as far as X, you want the one that has the highest power, which is four, and then the second, and then one. This is conventional four. Again, these are also very straightforward. They just want you to do the translation. Translations. Dickens has a student in her kindergarten class write the expression for the cost dollars to buy every student a book. It costs 175 for one student. Like if this is a formula, 1.75 as if you have like 10. The cost in dollars to buy every student a book. So how many books do you have? Let's say 10, you put it here. So these are just the formula they need, they need to use. And when you're adding these two, use the expression for part A and B, and then the total cost to buy a student a book and educational toy. So educational toy is this, and the book is that, so you're adding together. And these are both the like terms, you know, like terms, and then you're adding. What is like terms? Let's, let's say I have three apples, and somebody offer five apples. These two letters are the same. They call it like terms because they both are identical variables. So three apple and five apple is eight. Let's say I have five X2 plus three X2. They both have the same variables, identical variables. So that would be eight X2. Let's say you have 10, y2 minus 7y2. They both have the same variable. They call it like terms. I have 10 of this and subtract 7. So that would be 3y2. That's what like terms means. But if I have 7x2, can I subtract 5x? No. These two are not like terms. Like terms mean but they both must be identical. If you have x2, this one also has to be x2. You cannot subtract or add these two. That's what like terms means. But here are the same. Look, 1.75s plus 2.15s. S, they both have s, so you're just adding these two. Eighteen percent, so it's point eighteen. Five percent is five divided by one hundred. Percent means divide by hundred, right? So that would be point oh five. Two point five percent. What is two point five percent? Means two point five divided by one hundred. If you use your calculator, you see. 0.025. 4 divided by 100 is 0.04. And multiply by T. T is per taxable income. So whatever your income has, if you want to know how much you have spent for the Federal tax, you gotta multiply by this number. If you want to know how much of your income has been paid for social security, you multiply by this and so on. That's why you have 0.18 times T. 
0.05 times t. And then at the end, you add all these numbers together because they all are like terms. So that would make it 0.025. I have it, that's why I have it here for you to see. You add all those numbers that give you that 0.295. Now this is distributions for problem 30, 20, uh, 26. Let's say I have three times four is 12. What is three times four A? Numbers all always multiply by each other. So it would be three times four is 12 A. Or you could say this way, you have three of this. You have 4A, 4A, and 4A. How many A is that? 12A. So when you take a number and multiply by the term like this, you always multiply the numbers separately and you just like the letters. So that's what we did first. And then you look for like terms. These two are like terms? No. So you just write it in order, you remember? <clears throat> or that is the one with the higher, <clears throat> sorry, higher power first, and then number at the end, conventional form. A to power of two, A to power of one, and then 37. Same thing here. We distribute four, four times five is 20, four times four is 16A, minus seven times seven, minus 49, minus seven times eight is minus 56 eight. Then you look for like terms. These two are like terms because both have A2, okay? Look, 20 A2 minus 49 A2. These two are like terms. So you just write one. What is 20 minus 49? If you use your calculator, it give you minus 29. That's why you have minus 29A2. Plus 16A minus 56A. These two are like terms. They both have A. What is positive 16 minus 56? If you use your calculus, minus 48. And I write A2 first, conventional form. If you have A, write the one that has a higher power first and then the one with the lower one. Same thing works for all this. And then at the end, you write in conventional form. These are the same, you just deal with a decimal, you could use your calculator. If you have a fraction, when you bring the fractions, this is how it works. I have one third, I want to multiply that by nine B, right? Let me show you this one. One third, Multiply by nine over one B, which is what? Nine over three B. Anytime you take a fraction and you want to multiply by the whole number, just give a denominator of one. Because when you multiply two fractions, numerators and denominators are multiplied separate. So three goes to nine, which is three B. That's what you have three B. One third multiply by minus 12 when you distribute, I'll show you here, one third, when you want to distribute that to minus 12a, let's say it is, you multiply these two. What is one third multiplied by minus 12 over one a? It's, when you multiply these two, it's negative 12, over three and then minus four A. So this one is minus four and four times 20 over one, which is 20 over four. Minus one four times minus eight or eight over a. See? So 
when you want to distribute this one to that, it's minus one fourth. You distribute that to 20A, right? So we do 20 over one. So you get minus one four times 20 over one A. It's minus 20 over four A or negative five A. The last one, minus one four times minus eight. Minus one fourth times minus eight over one B, which is negative one times negative eight is eight. Four times one is four, which is two B. And then you look for log terms. 3B and positive 2B, these two are log terms, is 5B. And this two is, a, why do I write the A first and then B? Conventional form, the letter A, alphabetic order. A, I always write that first and then the B. The parameter is always you add all the lengths together. That's what the parameter means. Is I start from here, from here to here, the distance is W. I walk here, then I go this way. The distance is L minus four. Then I, it's like you're walking from here on this pad. You walk from here to there and then from there to here. And then from here to here. And then from there to there. And then from here to there, and then you return to the same point, the starting point, the same to the starting point. So you go here. Parameter is you are out, you are adding all this, and then you look for log terms. In the triangle, these two sides, length of these two sides, which is the width, are always equal. So if this is 4y plus y, the other one also is 4y plus y. The lengths are always equal in each rectangle. So if this is x plus 8, then this is x plus 8. OK? So how do you find your um, parameter? You start from here. You go 4x. 4y plus 5, okay, 4y plus 5. Then you go from here to there, x plus 8. Then you go from here to here, 4y plus 5. Then you go from here to there, to the starting point, x plus 8. You could either do it this way or how many x plus eight do you have? Two. So twice of that. How many four y plus five do you have? Two. So you multiply by two, either one. So you could either do it this way or that way, because in this case, then how many x do you have? One, two, two x. How many y? Four and four is eight y, and you write in conventional four. And then the rest is with eight and five, eight and five is 26. There are two ways to do it. But again, in the rectangle, width uh, are this equal and lengths are also equal. These are the one that you could actually go through the table and find it, you know? What's the maximum number of firearm incident? I think the highest number is here. You see that? The largest number of firearms incidents here. And so these are the ones that you could actually go through and not find. The same thing here. During which month and year did the San Diego have the lowest retail gas price? It said December 2005. It's right here. And that one. So the maximum is here for these, right? See? So these are the ones that you could actually find yourself. We go through the graph. I just want to show you how to use the graph and answer this question.
The next is a coordinate system. You know, if you have, if you have a number, you remember the number line that uh, there is a point of zero and then the number increase when you go to the right and then you go to the left decrease. And it's all the way to positive infinity and minus infinity. If I turn this, then I got a vertical one too. So if I take this one and I draw another line here, then I have an X and Y axis. This is a Y axis or vertical axis, and these are X axis. So all these numbers, when you turn, all these numbers transfer here. So look, one, two, Okay, and they all, all of these transfer also here. Minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four and so. That's what the coordinate system means. If they ask you to calculate, or I'm sorry, if they ask you to plot this point, point A is positive three and let's say positive five. The first number is always X and the second number is always Y. It means on the X axis, where is positive three? On the Y axis, where is five? One, two, three, four, this is five, okay? These two points, positive three, positive five. Then you draw, you draw the rectangle like that here and that give you point A. See, point A is right here. That's what the point, that's what point, that's what point A means. That's what point A means. Let's you want to find point B. Point B is minus four and one. I want to plot that. The first point is X, the second point is Y. Where is on the X axis, where is minus four? On the Y axis, where is one? So you come, you draw the rectangle here. That is the point B. Let's say you want to plot point C. Point C is like minus two and minus three. The first point is X, the second point is Y. Minus two on the x-axis, minus three that's point C. X is minus two and y is minus three. In this quadrant, everything is positive, but here is negative, okay? Let's say you have four and minus two. X is four and Y is minus two, right? X is four and Y is minus two. Point D, this is a point D. Let's say you have the point that it doesn't have any X is zero and Y is like five. What about this one? X is zero and Y is five. Is this point? Because X is zero and Y is five. What if you have a point, this point F, G, which is 
minus 7 and 0. X is minus 7 and Y is 0. On the Y axis, all the negatives are here. Minus 7, 4, 5, 6 is somewhere here. This is minus 7, right? And there is no X. So that is this point. Y is minus seven and then, uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'll take it back. Minus seven for X is here. It's five, six, let's say minus seven is this one, sorry about that. X is minus seven, but there is no Y. So that's how to plot a point on X and Y axis, horizontal vector, or X and Y coordinate system. So doing that, you should be able to do the rest of the problem, which is just matter of plotting. Again, you could pause this and copy this one for your information. See, all of these are about that problems. These are all matter of plotting. Okay.